Hey everyone, I'm Ryan with Escape Climbing. In our last video with Shaping 101, we talked about taking a hold and replicating it. And the basic idea, just to review, is that if you can't take a hold and replicate it, you're gonna have a really hard, hard time taking an idea out of your brain and putting it into foam. And so one of those most basic skills you can take is, or work with, is taking a hold, replicating it, and you're gonna figure out all those subtleties of why that hold looks that way, why it climbs that way, and why the radiuses come out in a certain way. Um, in this video, um, it's kind of the next step, the next iteration. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit of literally the nuts and bolts, how to get your bolt holes in, your set screws in, how to do that well. And then also, after you figure out how to replicate a hold, the next thing to do is start designing your own. And then we need to start talking about the ergonomics um, how your hands rest on there, and like the different directions you can take a shape. Um, so that's really what this video is going to be about. All right, so let's dive in. So the first thing in the last video, one of the first comments was, how do you put your bolt holes and your set screws in? And it's, it's an interesting thing, is I thought about this morning, um, Anthony responded on YouTube. That's Anthony, he's our behind the scenes guy. You wanna show, everyone knows what Anthony's like. He's here too. Um, and he's like, yeah, we'll shoot another video tomorrow. And at, at first, I was like, I don't really want to give that information out. But, but the more I thought about it, it's really important as we mature as an industry that we're getting that information out because there has to be a next generation of setters and the next generation of shapers. And part of that is getting that information out that we can be making higher quality products, whether you're going to compete against me or anyone else as an industry, we just need that level of professionalism to go up. And even within established um, holds, like we just uh, we have Kingdom, and we didn't shape all that stuff um, as we acquired their shapes. Like there are shapes in there that their bolt holes are done really poorly. And so that's just a quick example of like, as we're in a really competitive market, even big names like Kingdom, some of the basics they're not even doing right. And so. Getting this information out, hopefully as we start from, as you're just getting started in shaping, like you can start doing those basics right and you're not growing into your own big company or shaping for bigger companies and we're still doing some of those basics um, in a way that's just not as clean. Um, so let's just dive in. What do you need to do to put a bolt hole into a piece of foam? And so, for the most part, it's, it's just super straightforward. Um, you take a drill bit and you drill it in and then you make a bigger hole. Um, this, a couple of things to consider is these holds, we're a global market. So we're not shipping just in the US, we're shipping all over the world. And so this bolt hole has to work for both standard and metric sizing. Um, a metric head is much larger. So if you're specking out your hole to like a 3 8 inch bolt and that thing ships to Japan or to uh, Europe, that's going to be a, a real pain for them because they're going to have to bore it out bigger. Um, and so thinking about that, we use at Escape, we use a 13 32nd to drill out the main hole and we want it to be nice and tight on the, the metric shaft. Uh, to consider is where you place the bolt hole, it does matter. There's actually some ASTM specs on that. Uh, we can dig those up and we can we can publish that at some other point. Um, so you guys can have that that content and that's about where it's in relationship, just for like safety engineering specs. Uh, with that said, on this hole, so this is we're reshaping the wafers and we're gonna dual texture these. Um, so actually this is all gonna get dual textured over. So I would normally do all this in a drill press, but for the sake of the video, I'm just gonna do it by hand to make it really easy for us to um, look and talk about this. And actually, I'm just gonna dual texture this hole in um, later anyway as we put plaster on there. Um, because actually, let's, let's go there. Let's, when I do dual texture, I don't want to do this, the bolt hole or the set screw hole in foam because it's gonna leave, leave that like gritty um, feel to it. And I'm gonna do that afterwards. Um, so I can work my dual texture all the way through the hole. Um, but for the sake of this, so I actually just want to kind of split this right in the half uh, in this direction. I'm going to grab a marker here. Um, so I'm visually drawing a line here and then 
thinking I want, there's a lot of material up here. So the more material that I'm working with, if I put a, a bolt hole down here, uh, actually that puts a pivot point there, it's gonna be more likely to spin. If I put one here, um, and I'm out on the edge, is that true? Up on that edge, you're probably going to be okay, but it's starting to impede the usable surface, I would think. Yeah, we're getting into the usable surface. So I think the biggest thing is think about how it's going to spin. Um, and then the material is a really important factor. So I have a lot of material up here, and that means there's between the wall and the bolt hole, I have a lot of material, and that's going to give it a lot of strength. And I'm going to recess it down far enough that as the hand is on it, that the bolt hole is not going to really um, impede in that. Um, the more I get down as the, the profile starts to dip, the more likely it is to be hitting your hand on the edge of the, the bolt head. And I'll talk about that more in a second. So anyway, I'm just going to take my 730 seconds and I would again do this on a, a drill press to make sure it's coming down nice and straight. We're going to get our conference room all dirty here. The things we do for videos. Right, so that's the that's the first step, and this is this is the tool that I was a little hesitant to even talk about. This is a, called a counter bore, and this is really important as far as making sure that the head is perfectly aligned with that hole. Because what the other way to do would be to take something like a, a half inch or like 11 16 um, bit and drill it in, you make your big hole, and then that's going to leave a little divot, and then you drill out your next hole. And if you're not, the foam might be able to shift or move around, and if your bolt holes, those two holes aren't perfectly aligned, um, it's going to be a little wonky, and your quality is just not going to be there. And so what this counter bore does is this guides, so there's this head on the front, and it's going to guide it perfectly down that hole I just made, and then this outer um, part of the drill bit is perfectly flat. And again, in the drill press, that's gonna come straight down. Um, it's gonna give you like an absolutely perfect hole. So it's almost like machining your foam. And so I'm just gonna bring it down. This is um, really important. So I just wanna go down a little bit. Again, I'm gonna take a metric bolt because we wanna make sure this works um, metric. Metric's bigger. So I don't wanna grab like a three inch bolt to test the head. Um, I'm just going to drop this in because what I want to design is I want to design um, something that is almost as flush as possible. So when I'm climbing on this, that I'm not actually hitting the bolt head. And so um, we're getting to the point that the tip is about flush. Um, it's contouring down so the back head of the bolt is sticking up a little bit. And you can kind of split the difference or use your judgment that you want to recess this in a way that it's not affecting the climbing or as you're gripping this. So get your hands on there and grip it and think about how that knuckle might be dropping into the bolt head and really consider um, what you're creating when you're putting that in. And so I'm gonna just recess it, maybe another eighth or sixteenth. And that's gonna kind of split that difference um, as far as making that as close as possible to not affecting the climbing and me not feeling this um, when I'm climbing on there. Okay, and so that's pretty close, the bolt hole. Um, and the head, when it's in there, at the end of the day, is gonna sit almost nice and perfectly flush. At this point, if this was a foam one, um, again, this is gonna be dual texture, I'm just gonna knock that down a little bit and soften that. Um, just, again, as far as your hand resting on there, that it's not, uh, your palm's not finding any little sharp piece. So, that is your, um, bolt head. After that, more and more our industry, we are moving towards just screwing these things on the wall. And depending on what camp you're from, um, uh, there's setters out there that hate that I just put that in and they, all they want is this thing to screw on. Uh, the nice thing is we, with um, the Lone Star, like this is an easy screw on, you put your, your cap in, that's going to be nice and flush, and then you only need a couple more screw holes in here. Um, when you're putting your screw holes in, we um, use a bit that looks like this. Uh, we go back and forth between using a number 10 and a number 12. This is a number 10, so if you just Google um, 
number 12 countersink, um, these guys are going to pop up. With the considerations here, uh, if, if you're just putting one in, probably put it off to the side and that's just to prevent it spinning. And so in a comp setting, they're always going to put a, a set screw in and so it's never going to spin. Um, so you could do that off to the side. If you want, if you're thinking that there's a high probability that the route setters are going to want to just screw this onto a volume or on the wall, then you want to consider putting probably like three set screw placements in there, knowing that the setters at the end of the day are going to be putting um, three screw holes in here. And so in that case, what I want to do, I'm going to go straight down and I'm going to assume that the setters are going to want to um, screw this in. And so I'm just dropping this in and putting my set screw hole in there. Um, one thing I did is I didn't go, um, you could go straight down, but what that's going to do, because this is curving down, is you're going to have to drill this in a lot farther for that screw head to recess. And so I did it at a slight angle. If you push that angle too much, like even at 45, what might happen is if they're running a screw in, especially on a wall that is concrete or has a really hard surface, that screw actually might try to walk up the wall and not drive into the plywood. So it's really important that you don't you don't run like a steep angle as you want 90, you're gonna have to go pretty deep for that to recess nicely. And so you wanna kinda of just come in at a slight angle. Um, so the easiest one to place is straight below the bolt hole. I'm gonna do three on here um, because with a Lone Star, that's four screw attachments. That's gonna be bomber um, as far as safety. And before I do that, visually, I'm just going to draw in here. I don't normally visually draw in here. Is I'm thinking with my left hand, I might climb like here, and my thumb's naturally going to kind of run in a line down here. Okay? So as I'm, my thumb's kind of naturally resting there, it kind of comes through there. Um, and so there's a couple of things you could do with this placement is you want, if you're placing anything in there, it needs to be really flush, and so it's not a nice thumb catch. Uh, if you come way up here at the tip, some people would place this at the tip because it's unlikely I'm gonna come up here and use my thumb catch way up here at the tip. Um, other setters will look at that and say that's, you're making a better foot placement. And so that's something that you need to decide is um, for yourself or as a team, where you're gonna place these other set screws because they're really crucial as far as creating a thumb catch or creating something that you can step on. And so in this case, this is something that we sit down. Um, Anthony has a lot of saying experience. Um, we have Noah who, um, Noah Ridge who does a lot of comp climbing and we'll sit down as a team and Chris is another guy that has a ton of climbing experience and we'll just have a conversation about each hold. And so this is something I'm just not gonna do on the video. I'm explaining the thought process and as a group we would sit down and make that decision. We might come to the conclusion that we're gonna leave it because we want the setter to put that in later um, in, in case that they're actually just gonna bolt it on there and that like we're not creating a thumb catch. And so those are, those are conversations that the thought process that we um, go through as a team on the bolt hole and then the screw placement, okay? So if you have any questions on that, um, Leave it in the comments, shoot an email, uh, and we're going to move on. So that's that's just one aspect. That's just a really practical thing after you've, you've created your shape is you have to make this functional to bolt or screw on the wall. In the design process, and so in the first videos, we just took a hold and we replicated it. We just made another one. We kind of mirrored it, and we were, we're working through some of those skills. And after you've gotten that down, the next step is to create your own. And what I would do is uh, just, again, create something really simple. And what you need to start thinking about is this climbing surface and how it's gonna function in those radiuses, how sharp or how rounded this radius is, um, the, the angle that you choose on this surface, whether that's gonna be a slope or flat, like a neutral hold or in cut. And that's the next step is to really start having a dialogue with yourself or other people and understanding how to create different climbing experiences by manipulating that surface. And so it's easiest um, if you just kind of have a really basic hold like the wafer again, one of the most basic shapes on the market. That's also why it's really fun to climb on um, because you can really manipulate some of those subtleties as we'll talk about here in a second. And so 
the, I have some notes up here. This is just what we're going to talk through. We're going to talk about the ergonomics, um, how climbing is all about uh, it's just a friction game and how you can control that when you're shaping, um, how your hands and fingers contour to the hold. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about hand size and then that's our video. And so first thing, ergonomics, it's really important that we're shaping things that are comfortable. And we've moved way beyond in our industry the time when we're replicating outdoor sharp climbing and trying to bring the outdoors indoors. And this, again, like this is just our point of view at Escape Family and how we shape is, um, and I'll kind of, I'll contradict myself a little bit. Friction as a brand, Friction Climbing is in our family and they do the natural stuff. And that's, that's one thing that's unique and different about them. And so they, they might push more towards that natural, but in general, even if we're pushing natural, we still want it to be ergonomic. So no one should be like tweaking the fingers or getting cut or having like these razor edges digging in in certain points. And so you need to be thinking about that when you're shaping. And so a big part of that is like your radiuses. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more as we get into like the contours. And in that vein, so as, as you think about um, setting and Anthony will do some some round setting 101 videos and one thing that he'll talk about is setting should be fun and it should be fair and when you're shaping you should be thinking that that shape should be fun to climb on but I never try to shape a hole that's fair and that is up to the route setter I want to give the route setter a tool that they can create a fair problem um, because hand sizes are going to be different I don't know that this hold is going to be on a really steep angle or if he's going to put it on a vertical wall or a slab is I can't control that and I don't know what the setter is going to do. And so I need to create an effective tool and I might put in the description like this is really good for a steep wall or a slab and I can kind of guide that a little bit but ultimately it's up for the route setter to make a problem that's fair and it's not my job as the shaper to try to create a fair hold. Um, there's things you can do to push it towards that line. Uh, that might be another topic, whole another video of how you can kind of balance that line. But as a very generalization, uh, don't try to create a fair hold. You try to create a fun hold, but really be thinking about how the route center is going to, to use that. Um, climbing is 100% a friction game. And so using these wafers as an example is there are dozens of new wafers that I just shaped and each one, so one whole line is uh, versions of sloper. So it's a difficult dual texture line is what these are gonna be. And then there's gonna be another set that is more in cut positive. And so if you look at the, I'm just, I just grabbed two from the, the sloper series of these like sloping ledges, is that two things going on in here. And so if we look at the climbing hold. So here's the wall. And then let's extend that out. The hold, this wafer is going to come up like this. And then it's a sloper. So I have a straight line here on some of these. And that's just a straight ledge. Um, there's another, I'm going to zoom this in. So if we look at this crib surface over here, um, this is either a straight line. And that's what this hold is like. The, the other hold here in this series it kind of swoops okay and so you're going to see like some swooping holds and different levels and variations in there and that's when you start to study your hand and how it's going to feel in there so some shapers will be like i just work this and you touch it like that's part of the art and feeling it um, and that's really what they're talking about is these different radiuses um, i can still have this angle and if it bows like this this is actually a really awkward hole because Take a look at your hand, your finger, the tip of your finger actually um, arches backwards. And so if my finger's on here, my finger's actually going this direction. So it'd sit really comfortably in that dish. And if this holds bump that way, then my finger's gonna come up here and I'm really gonna have friction only on this part of that radius. And then this is all kind of a waste. And if I'm pushing down, then I'm pushing, depending on where your joint is, you're actually pushing like some weird pressure on that backward facing arc. And that's where you can have a hole that's kind of a sloper, but it's gonna feel awkward. And so as we think about those subtleties and we're like, oh, how it feels, um, this is like really what we're talking about in that conversation, those like subtleties and those dips. 
and like getting in their feeling and pulling on it. Um, and that's, um, in the best way that I can articulate it, um, what we're going for. And so there's different variations of that. Uh, if you, let's go over on the wall over here. And so this is three holds from our legacy line right here. They're not on the wall that well. Um, and this is pretty much a flat ledge. And so this is from different eras. And we've been doing this for a long time. If you really study the radius here from the, these are original DRCC holds, it's really comfortable. The radius is really thought out. Um, same thing on this one is if you start to look at your joints and how this radius is and then how it contours down, like they really hit it. And that's why these are good classic shapes. Um, this is the chrome dome, one of the megas. And Luigi shaped this one. It's a fairly new one. And this is a really interesting case because we have this great, it's a sloper, it's fairly um, flat, and we have this great arching radius. And then right at the top, it dips down and then curves up. Um, and so I'll draw that up on the board, but as, as, as you study this hold, um, Luigi did something that's really interesting. And so if you think about climbing being a friction game, it's all about getting friction on the hold to hold your body on the wall, is that chrome dome, if you study it, so here's, here's the wall, I'm going to draw this the opposite way. The chrome dome comes up and then it arches over nicely and then it dips and then it kind of goes back up. I'm exaggerating this. We have our dual texture there. And so we have this really nice curved radius here. And then if you look at the tip of your finger, um, when you curve it over, you get all these bags here. Um, and so those, like the skin flopping is gonna give you really good friction all over this hump. And then at this point, your finger actually curves up. And so if your finger sits in there and curves up, that's giving you friction pretty much from as close to the tip of your finger all the way back until you lose it depending on where your hand's at. And so you, you take a hold like that and that was really thought out as far as giving like absolute maximum friction to hold on to that. And so you put that on a steep wall, um, it's still gonna be a slope or any sort of an angle, but you're gonna, it's gonna feel really good. And that gets into um, the next thing is like, you can design holds that feel secure or insecure. And I could also design a very similar sloper that might be equally difficult, but I might um, change that a little bit, that I'm giving a little less friction and it's gonna feel a little more insecure. And so those are some of the things that as you're climbing, you're probably never processing. You're just hitting that hole and you're thinking about the movement. You're like, oh, I feel really secure on here. Or you could be hitting a hole and it feels insecure because the dual texture might start at a certain point and end at a certain point, or the way the radius is, is it's actually giving you a little less friction even though you might have just as much power on that hold. And so that's kind of when I talked about shaping 2.0 is it's starting to think about your hands, think about um, how the radiuses are curving and then how your hand is interacting with um, that surface. So with the Chrome Dome, again, that's probably one of the most secure slopers you can have just because of how much friction you're maintaining. And as we talk about this, again, this is, this is just our perspective. Um, as we shape at the Escape family, as we have other people shape for us, um, this is kind of how we evaluate holds. It doesn't mean we're right. It's just the, the philosophy that we run by um, as we're shaping and we're adding new stuff to the line. With secure and insecure, it's, that's why I love dual textures. Dual textures are really fun to play with as far as making things insecure too. And if you look at the slots in the Kingdom line, we just redid the dual texture. And I wish I had a slot in here, but for the sake of this, um, let's assume that this is the slot surface, is originally the texture came way out here on the face. And what we did is we pushed the dual texture back, not to the lip, but we actually pushed it inside. And that did two things. One is this thing's up on end. You can just step on the edge and find some texture to stand on. And so we tried to eliminate the foot. Same thing on the edge is it really matters where your dual texture comes as far as getting a toe in there. Um, one thing thinking about friction is you're on the edge of any of these holds. And if 
where we put the dual textures, I can actually get a lot of friction right here on this radius and even down into the face. If I'm touching that, you can actually get a lot of purchase. Go up to a hold sometime on a slab, don't actually use the hold and just like get friction here. You can like really leverage off without even wrapping your hand around the radius. And you'd be really surprised and that's important as far as when you're shaping to understand, the climber might not understand how much friction they're getting out of these holds, but once you start to understand as a shaper, you can start to manipulate how easy or how hard that is and give a better tool to the rough center to use. And so with that said, on the slots, we actually pushed her back past the edge, uh, making that a really insecure hold. And so that's just part of the conversation of you can try to make a hold feel really secure or really insecure. Um, another good example, of, if you think about jugs, is the down climb jugs that we designed alongside the bouldering project is that was designed to feel really secure from the second your hand touches it. And not to say that that hold is giving you more power to pull off of or that you're actually more secure on it, but the way the radius is and how you can hook your fingers around is you're gonna feel secure the second you're touching that. And so you could do like some big swooping move off of that if you just took that hold, that down climb hold, you're doing a move because you're actually kind of opening up your hand. So the fact that it has this big lip is really irrelevant when you're doing that move. Um, you're gonna feel really secure moving. You could take something like our simple jugs, which just has this big nice radius and you're gonna have a similar movement. It'll probably have the same power and stability, but you're gonna feel a little more insecure as you're moving. So again, just in your mind as you're shaping, you can have a lot of control um, and be thinking about, do I want this to feel secure? Do I want to feel insecure? And then when you answer that question, then how do you go about it? And hopefully you have some ideas of how you can execute that. Um, we already talked about the hand and the finger contours. Uh, again, just study your fingers as they move. In some reality, look at your hands, understand how the fingers move. Um, you don't ever want to hold that's going to push your finger back up in like an awkward way at a certain pivot point. Um, because we all climb, we have joints here. And so if you're creating a hold that the radius is in between two of your joints, that's going to be really awkward and it's not going to feel good. And it might be hard to articulate why it doesn't feel good when you're climbing on it, um, but there's, there's reasons for all of that. So be, be thinking about your joints, be thinking about how your hands move, um, and be shaping accordingly. Um, another reason, so I started out the video saying, I don't ever try to design something that's fair. And a big part of that is hand size, is the setter understands if he's setting that, that problem um, for like the youth kids team, like that's gonna look much different than setting it for adults. And as we look at a hold, I might grab a jug and be like, hey, this is really on the edge of being ergonomic. Like it might be pushing being sharp. And for a big hand, that's probably okay because a little hand's gonna touch that and it's gonna feel completely different. There, a little hand's gonna be much more open than a big hand. And so the whole concept of shaping something that's fair, it, it's almost impossible to do and you have to leave that up to the setter to understand their clients who's climbing on that route, who's climbing in that gym, and then for you just to give them that tool. Um, the last thing is I started out showing how to put the bolt holes in. Uh, a few, I pulled out these, these are the Flintstones. Um, this was a set that I was just actually walking out there thinking about how do you talk about bolt holes and this was sitting there on the mat because we we're setting a problem um, with it on our test wall right now. And so I just picked this one up and this is a good example of what not to do. And so this is a really experienced shaper um, that put a bolt hole like right here. And so if you grab this Flintstone, your thumb naturally goes like immediately to the bolt hole. That is the most natural spot um, that your thumb is going to go to. Um, and as you think about designing this hold, um, essentially this grip surface is the exact same as this grip surface. Um, they just, he added some texture out on the side and then decided to place the bolt hole here. Um, there's two things going on with this. We could have, um, if I caught this before manufacturing, I actually would have just moved the bolt placement just subtly over here. If I caught this in the shaping part, we would have shaped this hold with more foam out here 
Um, maybe cut some out of here. We keep that same aesthetic, but that would let us shift the bolt hole even further out. Now when you're pulling down here, that this would all be textured. And then our bolt hole would be right here under the pointer finger. Um, and not out here where your thumb naturally wants to go. And this is a directional hold. You're always gonna grab this with your right hand. So your right thumb's gonna be right there. This is gonna be really awkward. It's not designed at all for your left hand. Um, and so you really need to think about this. The other thing is we talk about placement for screws is by putting the set screw up here, we actually created this flat ledge that a really experienced, precise climber could get his toe in there. And so there's no reason that we wouldn't put the set screw over here, because again, this would never be a left hand. An experienced setter wouldn't set this as a, as a left hand. This is a directional hole. Um, and so those are two tweaks that we put the set screw there, and the bolt hole is shifted down. Maybe design this hole slightly different. Not saying this is a bad hole, I'm just saying, as we think about professionalizing the industry, these are conversations that we need to have. And this is such a subtle tweak that Across the board within our own company, we have a lot of holds that fall into this camp um, and just industry-wide. And so kind of my motivation of doing this is, one, I want to create new shapers that out of the gate are already experienced. They don't have to go through a lot of the same learning curves that I did and that we can run faster as an industry. And then just as a whole that we can all um, start doing some of these little details just slightly better. Um, so I hope that this was informational. Again, these are just our opinions, this is the way we think about doing it, not saying it's the right way to do it. Uh, but hopefully it gives you a starting point. If you have questions, um, again, leave them in the comments. And I was gonna say, I'm really bad at responding to emails, but you can shoot me an email, ryan at escapeclimbing.com, or orders at, Anthony's over here laughing at me, um, orders at Escape Climbing, and we would love to kind of facilitate and have those conversations and try to at least point you in the right direction if, if you have questions and comments. So there'll be, there'll be more to come. Leave ideas for more videos because we want to keep educating and answering your questions and um, keep this conversation going.